One year ago today, Mohamed Bouazizi, a 26-year-old fruit seller in Tunisia, protested his treatment by police and set himself on fire. Public outrage over his death triggered a revolution that ultimately toppled the Tunisian government and eventually spread across the Arab world. Now that several regimes have fallen or appear to be struggling to hang on to power, what's next for the so-called Arab Spring? What does the year ahead look like? Well, joining us now with more on that is Jamie Rubin. He's the former Assistant Secretary of State under President Clinton. Great to have you with us. Good morning. So what do you think it is? I mean, outside of perhaps social media, or maybe it is just social media, that made this become so big this year? Well, I think the real issue is that uh, the Middle East was the exception to the rule of democracy around the world. Asia went through its changes. Latin America and Africa went through its democratic moments. The Middle East was the last place on this earth that had no real democratic values in its government. So it was just a question of time. Now, obviously, the Tunisia uh, moment, uh, the sacrifice the fruit seller made, you know, was dramatic. Mm -hmm. And social media certainly helped uh, send the messages out and got the uh, speed of the revolution perhaps developed a little bit quicker than it might have otherwise. But I think these were, uh, these were inevitable uh, and social media and, and, and the internet and television and modern communications brought it to all of us to see and I think helped the world uh, encourage it rather than be afraid of it. What happens now for these countries that are trying to rebuild? In some cases, there are power vacuums. Who takes hold of them? Well, that's the, the real issue. You know, the, the big country where the West made a substantial difference was Libya, where uh, the Western countries, NATO, primarily the British and the French, with some help from America, uh, overthrew uh, uh, Muammar Gaddafi using air power. Libya was a country that had no real institutions. It had tribes. But Gaddafi's dictatorship was the only real institution in the country for decades. And so now they're struggling to develop uh, a way to work with each other, to negotiate with each other, to deal with each other without the, the dictatorship to put a lid on all of this. I'm hopeful mm -hmm. because I think the Libya revolution came about with the support of the world and I think the whole world wants it to succeed, but it's not going to be easy. So if it's not easy, do you think then by 2012, the end of 2012, we're going to say this is a done deal or is this an ongoing thing? Well, let's take the other big country, Egypt, uh, where today they're still battling it out on the streets with large protests against uh, the military rule of the country that has been there since uh, their president was, was toppled by the revolution. And you have all this, the crucial forces. You have the Islamics. Uh, parties that have a lot of power. You have the military, which is still ruling. And then, of course, you have the people who have been so crucial uh, to making political change. Those three forces are going to uh, battle it out, both on the streets, in the minds of people, mm -hmm. and even, and this is important, in the voting booth. Yeah. And that's what we hope, that they can learn to resolve their differences, develop their society through democratic change rather than through violence. Mm -hmm. Jamie Ruman. Thank you so much for being with You're us. You're very we appreciate welcome. It.